Hello and welcome back to No BS. Today we return to talking about not only comic books, but also a character who's been getting wronged and been getting a bad rap lately. I'm of course talking about The Flash. The Flash has been getting some pretty terrible representations in media, some pretty bad portrayals, and he's a great character. He doesn't deserve that. The Flash is awesome. For those who don't know, The Flash is essentially the really fast character in comic books. He's the one that runs really fast. He uses his super speed to fight crimes. He can even do crazy things like vibrate through walls, time travel, shrink his little suit down and move faster than light, all kinds of fun stuff. Essentially, The Flash is a classic DC comic book character who's also been known to be part of the Justice League. The Justice League is the group of superheroes who come together and save the world, and The Flash is part of that. In fact, The Flash was part of the Justice League movie that just came out in 2017, and I would say that's where his portrayal started to go downhill. That Flash was not too great. That movie was definitely a flop and definitely a big mess. And one of the worst parts was The Flash. He was played as this kind of kid character who came off really annoying. He tried to be funny. He had a few laughs in there. He made you kind of chuckle. But most of it was cringe. Most of it was him trying to be funny around all these other badass characters. He was like comic relief. And I would say that's where things started to go downhill. And then now, leading to the present, now we're talking about a new version of The Flash. And it's getting even worse. Now we're talking about something that's very, very woke. We're getting a very woke, very pro-leftist version of The Flash. In fact, he's even becoming an alphabet character. He's getting a new suit. He's getting a new kind of person playing him, and they're going to be alphabet, and that's what we're going to talk about. And before we get to the article, let's just say right out the gate, this is something that's been happening in comics and in books and in some of the movies. DC has had this. It happened to them before. Marvel has had a lot of woke additions, like when they had that whole Snowflake character. They've had characters based on stuff like this. They've made their video games woke by adding in a woke minority character. Things like that have happened in comic books for a long time, specifically in the actual comic books that have been getting increasingly woke over the last few years. And that seems to be the case here with DC as well. As you can see by this article, it says, DC's future state will introduce a new non-binary flash to the Justice League. So this is the alphabet character, non-binary, assuming that's what I think it means. It's just kind of a character that's not male or female. They're somewhere in the middle. They're kind of androgynous, I think is what they might have called it before. But today the term is non-binary. This is NB. This is what the alphabets would call an N, I guess. It's L G B N T L N C. You know, they have all those letters in there. This is one of them. And them putting it on a Flash character is obviously a sort of advertising gimmick. They're trying to pander. They're trying to signal to leftists that they're down with their causes. And that's what we're talking about today. So with that said, Let's get some more details before we talk more. In the new year, DC's comics focus will turn to Earth's future and its future state line of books, featuring new incarnations of classic heroes who are all committed to fighting the ever-present forces of evil spread across the universe. In addition to turning characters like Jonathan Kent into fully realized versions of themselves, Future State is also slated to introduce wholly new heroes like Jess Chambers, the newest speedster to take the Flash moniker. So I don't know, that's kind of a contradiction already this isn't a new character. I mean, it's a new person playing the Flash, but they're still being the Flash. They're still getting the same powers, the speed force. They're still wearing a similar suit with the lightning bolt on it and the red and yellow colors on it. It's definitely a different suit, definitely a different version. But for them to say, oh, it's a new character, but it's also taking the Flash's moniker, it doesn't really make sense. That's kind of like a contradiction, like an oxymoron, like saying Jumbo Shrimp or something strange like that. And I mean, it's something people say, but the point is this future state, it seems to be an interesting, possibly interesting premise talking about what happens in the future. But I don't get why every time in the future, it's just like, oh, we're going to make new versions of old heroes that we like. I don't know why nothing is original. I don't know why they have to draw so heavily from source material. I mean, sometimes that's fun. Sometimes it's cool. There are certain series that pull it off right. I would say a good example is I think it's called Kingdom Come, one of the Alex Ross comic books did a thing where they flash forward to the future and it had Superman and Batman when they're older and there was this whole new round of heroes coming in under them. That was interesting because it was the same characters just older facing off against these new younger ones but with this one it looks like they're just alphabet washing the flash they're just making him non-binary just to get some publicity and to just pervert and change and totally misuse these classic characters and names. But before Jess becomes the newest flash they're set to make 
make their debut in DC's Very Merry Multiverse, a holiday-themed special featuring one-shots focused on various DC characters doing their damnness to be their most festive selves. Writer Ivan Cohen and artist Eleonora Carlini. Specific story introduces Teen Justice, a new team hailing from Earth-11, where teams of younger heroes aren't commonplace the way they have been on parallel Earths. In an interview with Screen Rat, Cohen went into detail about how, aside from featuring mostly gender swap versions of classic heroes from DC's Prime Universe, Earth's 11 history maps relatively cleanly onto that of the publisher's mainstream continuity. But in the case of The Flash, DC wanted to go beyond simply presenting a female analog to Barry Allen and his protégés. Rather than leading with Barry Allen, it's established from the jump that Jesse Quick is Earth 11's most iconic Speed Force user, and her familiar connection to Jess, who is non-binary, is what leads to them becoming Quick Kid and joining Team Justice. So these are some sketches of the new character. It's Quick Kid, whatever. And I just I just really like this, this intro because it talks about how most of these characters are just gender swaps. It's just girl versions of every character that we love. Girl Batman, girl Superman, girl whatever other character they want to do. They're just girl washing everything, making them alphabet. It's just the simplest idea. It's so mindless and silly. I mean, I don't know what they think. They think that's cute. They think that's interesting. I don't get mad about it. Like I know it's sometimes people laugh at channels like this saying, oh, you're just triggered by characters or triggered by comics. It's like, no, it's just, it's very obvious. This is happening so much. It's so prevalent. Everything gets gender swapped. And when you see it and you see all these swaps, you start to notice, you're like, okay, what is the trend here? What do they like and don't like? Apparently, obviously, they don't like characters that are white. So everything gets a minority version, black, Hispanic, Asian, something like that. It's all got to be minorities, at least in relation to America, what are minorities in America. So white is bad. Guys are bad. That's the other thing. These are anti-white, anti-guy kinds of things. It's a pro-diversity push. And those are the bad premises that go along with that. When people push diversity, it means they're anti-white and anti-male. Uh, typically, I mean, not always. I'm not saying every single person means that intentionally either, but the way things pan out, the way we're seeing this comic thing go, the way we're seeing other things that are pro-diversity, like they want diversity in Hollywood, but that just typically means less whites, less males, more minorities, women, alphabets, anything beyond the norm, anything like that we are used to, like straight couples, white people, the majority is obviously has Caucasian or white. There's nothing wrong with that. We're not trying to overly support that group or bash another group, but these guys are. These guys are low-key attacking these groups that they don't like, and they're doing so in this way that's so cringe because they're actually doing so in a way they're trying to act like they're heroic for removing all the white characters and the dudes. Like They act like that's something that should be honorable and they should get pats on the back for. But to me, it just really seems like they're biased and offensive and bigoted, really. They're just as bad as the people they pretend to fight against. A Titans-type team always has a super fast member, but there are so many Flash characters in the DC multiverse, we knew anyone we added to the category had to be really different from the rest. Not just Wally West with curves, Cohen said. I suggested that Kid Quick could be Earth 11's first gender-fluid character, and once editors saw Eleonora Carlini's terrific take on the character design, there was suddenly a lot of interest in them for stories beyond the Mary Multiverse special in December. I don't know. I don't know if I buy that. I don't know. Maybe if, if their office is as woke and political and liberal as it seems, then I guess they would get that excited about someone that's gender fluid. To me, it just seems like a silly kind of addition. I mean, I have nothing against these groups. Again, it's just not about bashing any group or overly supporting another group. Like I'm not for the majority, the Caucasians. I'm not against the minorities or the black browns or Asians or whichever. I'm not even against, you know, gender fluid or any alphabet people. I love all the people, but the fact that someone in this group gets you that excited, the fact that you perverting this long running character, the Flash is typically played by a white American dude, and there's nothing wrong with that. And them thinking there's this big need to change that shows how offensive that is and how silly and simple minded they are, too. That's all they could think of. And their only ideas seem to be gender swapping things and black or brown washing them. And it's pretty sad. It's pretty lame. It's just super dumb, too, because they're coming into these major corporations, these major lines of different comics. In this case, we're talking about DC comics. And all they could do is they come in and they just change everything for the worse. And they come in and then they're so bad. Their 
ideas are awful and it's going to make their company lose even more money. But they deserve it. I mean, they've asked for this. Just following in their aunt's sizzling footsteps to become the world's next A-list speedster is the sort of move that, beyond making future state, sounds like an interesting line to get into. Speaks to DC's avowed commitment to making its titles more effectively reflect the diversity of its readership. The prospect of DC publishing comics in which these definitive iterations of Wonder Woman, The Flash, and potentially even Batman are all people of color is worth taking note of because of the publisher's storied history of primarily focusing on white and white presenting characters. But at the same time, the important question to keep in mind as future states launch grows closer is what will become of the characters like Jess Chambers in the long term. So they're openly saying that they focus too much on white characters, but this obviously makes sense. A lot of white characters in comic books that come from a predominantly white country make sense. If you're going to read comic books in India, they would mostly be Indian characters with brown skin. If you went and they made comic books in Africa, if they could even do that, like, I don't know if they have the printing presses or any kind of media like that in places like Africa necessarily. I'm sure some places maybe, but if they did, Africa would have comic books with characters that are mostly black. And in this case, we have comics in an American country that's mostly white, that was historically white. Most of these characters are made a long time ago, especially DC. That's almost a hundred year old industry right there. And yeah, so a lot of their characters were white and now they're still white because of history and legacy. The country is still mostly white too. I mean, the majority has shrunk, but the idea that putting in some alphabets is representing the readership. I mean, how many non-binary people you actually think are out there and how many do you actually think are reading Marvel comic books? I mean, you could easily prove that only about 4% of the country is even any alphabet character. There's not that many alphabets or gay or trans or whatever people in the country as they claim. So they lead on that this is like a big move for representation, but really they're over-representing this small minority that's very vocal and getting a lot of tension with liberal media right now. So that about wraps things up. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Tell me what you think by commenting your thoughts below. Subscribe if you're new, hit the bell for notifications, and until next time, have a great day.